right, this is Eric Van. I'm back with the EVS TV podcast. I have my homie, my partner here, Rashani, in the building. Talk to the people. Yo, what's happening, y'all? This is Rashani, West Coast Finest. Um, super creative. Um, just podcast on top of podcast. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much, Eric. I really do appreciate it. Hey, hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. This, this has been a long time coming, man. <laughs> man, I'm telling you. I'm telling this, you. <laughs> you know what, fam? I got to say this before anything else. This is a motherfucking Kojak production. Man, it is a Kojak production straight up, straight up and down. <laughs> straight <laughs> up and down. Yeah, this is and the crazy thing. Like this, this, this podcast was originally supposed to be me and Kojak. This was supposed to be like we we had talked about doing a podcast like before everything went down with him. We were just talking about like doing one. We was like, yeah, we should start a podcast up because he was always, you know, like he put me on to you and eclectic and uh, everybody that you know that we listen to and that I mm-hmm. still listen to. So it's like it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I miss him, man. I wish he was still around, man, because. There's a lot going on, and I would love to see, you know, hear his thoughts on some things right now, especially. Yeah, me too. In the world, yeah, especially with, you know, the pandemic and everything, just things in entertainment and everything like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would love to get his thoughts, like, and, and it sucks because, like, he he was, you know, you know, he was a big Cap, uh, Captain America fan and all that. And, like, the simple fact that he didn't get this to get that, you know, that, uh, the uh in not infinity war but in game he didn't get this get that finale man mm-hmm. to, and i'm like man like that that's I, it, it sucks every time i see him i'm like man i wish he was you know he got to see that because he was he was waiting for that avengers assemble you know he was waiting yeah. on that he was waiting on that you know so he's like yeah it's gonna happen he's like it's gonna happen that, that movie's gonna come he's gonna do it <laughs> i'm like dang he did it man but yeah it's like I say, he's he's here in spirit, man. He's like, like I said, he's been guiding me through this whole podcasting game. Like he's, you know, he's he's giving, you know, I say he's kind of he's guiding me, you know, with help, like just you know getting guests on and everything like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, because I, I like that Leo Rush, like between my nephew and mm-hmm. and Kojak, I didn't think I was gonna get Leo Rush on the show, but I but through my nephew, like and he and he was close with Bill too, so. He mm-hmm. was like Bill. He was like he would. Be, he was like Bill would be going crazy right now. Exactly. <laughs> he was, yeah. So it was like, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, but uh, uh every what's going on with you? I know you got the uh consistently good the the uh, food deal yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. How's that? How's how's everything going with that? Actually, it's it's pretty interesting. Um, I'm having more fun creating and just the science of food than I am actually worried about where my next client's going to come from. You know, like Mm -hmm. right now, as we speak, I have my first duck breast. Uh, I I was like, you know what, one of the cool things about being able to cook and being able to cook relatively well or being having the confidence to know that you can cook well is that you can see stuff on like top chef or, Hell's Kitchen or Master Chef or all that kind of stuff. They're selling for like 60 bucks and be like, you know what? I want that. But I don't want to pay for it. And so (laughs) you just go and like the stuff they sell on Master Chef. I'm going to tell you right now, the stuff that like the 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 duck and all that kind of stuff they sell on Master Chef for like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. A whole duck. A whole one. Cost twenty dollars. I know that because I just bought one and and broke it wow. down. And so I have the two duck breasts, um, and then the legs and the thighs on the smoker right now. Um, mm. And so I'm like, you know, I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. I don't know what it's supposed to turn out like. I've never had duck in my life. Yeah, basically. But I'm going to. Yeah, exactly. I call it <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. What I was planning on doing was um, starting up a program and calling it playing with my food. <laughs> because right it was just gonna be me you know this sounds like it will be good like what i'm gonna do is i'm smoking the duck while mm-hmm. i'm talking with you and then i'm going to take um a, a plum jam that my mom gave me a spiced plum jam and i'm gonna combine that with my homemade barbecue sauce and i'm gonna mm-hmm. make a, a barbecue plum reduction sauce and drizzle that over the top of the duck breast 
Mm-hmm. And then I'm also going to have a uh, pureed cauliflower and just some mixed vegetables, just some, you know, green beans, whatever it may be. And yeah. that right there can honestly constitute a 35 to $40 plate. Okay. And I just want to see what it will taste like. Like, I'm yeah. not trying to sell it. I'm just like, yeah. yo, I'm trying to get this out of the way. So I know when somebody asks me what's your duck like, I can be like, this is it. This is what this, it's going to taste like. This is what it is. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. That's what's up right there. That's what's up. That's dope. Now, what all else do you, uh, do you guys make? I know you like ribs and stuff like that, right? Ribs, burgers, uh, brisket um nice. tri-tip we have a, a double smoke tri-tip that's off the hook um we have macaroni and cheese you know uh chicken thighs turkey all the way down the line but then we start fucking around with stuff mm-hmm. like i said i see stuff on tv and i'm like i can make that so i started right. making risotto like oh, nice. i saw i saw it on 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 top chef or master chef or hell's kitchen i'm sorry and i was like you know mm-hmm. what i can make that so i went and i found a recipe to work for me and that's all cooking is for those of y'all who are sitting there at home wondering you know am i good enough to do this yes you are um do i have the the instructions or the manual a dude told me if he was where I am now, he would have never gone to culinary school because with the internet, there's so many different recipes and so many different chefs that are out there telling you how to make food at a top, at a high level that you really don't need the culinary academies anymore. So just go out there and try it. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, but at least, you know, you're not just sitting in the background 10 years from now saying, you know what? I wish I had tried it. And then you finally decide to try it. And now it's 10 years later. So mm-hmm. instead of you being like 20, what, 26, 27, now you're 36, 37, trying to start up this thing. You got a whole family on your leg and all that kind of stuff. Start failing. Now. One of the yep. things I tell my kids in basketball is that failing is nothing more than controlled practice. Failure is nothing more than controlled success. You are literally at practice. That's when we're at practice and they're working on plays and they mess up the plays, all they're doing is failing over and over again. It's just controlled yeah. failing in a controlled environment yeah. until you so reach success. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with life. You just got to think about life as life is a continuous controlled failure. Like, okay. I'm in Cali, but I know that where you're at, they also have these things called controlled burns where they will set a field on fire and watch that motherfucker to make sure it doesn't take the whole avenue down and they control the burn. I've seen it. Yep. Controlled failure. Like you're in a place where you're like, I'm going to keep working on this until I can do it perfectly. That's controlled failure. I ruined like when I got my first client for a Thanksgiving meal, a month prior to actually having to cook their meal, I bought six turkeys, six big ass turkeys. I was sick of turkey by the end of it because nobody I, I had asked people to help me. I was like, can you teach me? And that's the thing that I learned. A lot of people don't want to teach you in real life. So I asked people to teach me how to break down a turkey. And they were like, I ain't got time for that. So what I did was I went on the Internet and I bought six turkeys. And the first three turkeys looked awful. They were absolutely horrible. Like meat, there was more meat left on the carcass than there was on the actual uh, pieces that I was cutting off. And it was just jagged and I was cutting through bones and stuff. And just keep working at it. Like, don't be ashamed of failure. Don't run from failure. You got to run through failure in order to meet success. That's the way that it is. You got to walk through fog to get the sunshine sometimes. That's just the way it is. When I go to the beach, there's fog all over the place. But you know what? I know that once I get through that fog, it's a beautiful day out there. It's the same thing for failure. If you don't say, you know what? I got to go through this to get here. Then you're never going to reach the goals you really want to reach. Like you with podcasting. I'm super proud of you. But you had to walk through the steps of failure before you got to the place where you're confident enough to be able to run your podcast the way that you want to run it, which is dope. Appreciate that, bro. That's exactly it. I had to start from the bottom, you know, and Mm -hmm. and, and, and grind grind where I'm at now. And it's like, it's it's been a process. But I mean, 
I'm willing to learn. And I'm like, I, like, like I say, like you guys inspired me, you know, you guys might not know it, but you know, you and uh, the guys at Gamer Tag Radio, the uh, Eclectic Relaxation, guys like that, or the Dream Team, you know, uh, Phoenix, all those guys, man. Yeah, I looked up to y'all and like, hey, hey, if they could do it, you know, I'd be at work just listening to podcasts all day at work. I was listening, I'm working and listening to my podcast. It keeps me saying, so I'm like, you know what? I think this is something I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was like, you know, so I just started, you know, looking up, hey, what do I need to do to, you know, look on the internet? What do I need to do to start a podcast? Talking to you, talking to, you know, Phoenix from the Phoenix podcast or, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. Just kind of just asking around like, hey, what, 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 what do I do? How do I get into this? And I just started, you know, finding a platform and just went from there, man. And, and here we are. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a process. Like I said, it's been a brand and uh, just getting guests on, like people getting guests on, that's, that's a whole other, you know, deal you know, getting celebrities on and stuff like that. It's, it's mm-hmm. a process. I guess a learning process. Like some people flake. Some people are like, yeah, I'm going to do it. You know, and then like, hey, you ready? You ready to get on? Hey, you ready? Uh, no, no. Wait, no, what? wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. And then, and, then, and then when it's time to go, oh, they're not around. They're not mm-hmm. like, okay. Okay. But, you know, it, it happens. You know, some people come through. Some people don't like it. Some, some people are nervous about questions. You know, what kind of questions are they going to ask me? Or, you know, it's like, that. I, but I always, like I tell people, when I interview somebody like that, or I interview a celebrity, I always like, hey, what do you want to talk about? What do you not want to talk about? What, you know, mm-hmm. what can I ask you? Like, uh, when I did the Baja Blast interview, I'm, I don't ask him before, hey, what do you want to talk about? What, what, you, you know, anything that I, I don't want to mention, you know, or you, you don't want me to mention, I'll, I'll do that. So, but yeah, it's it's been a process, and 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 that's just the like you say, it's just the podcasting game. But yeah, I'm just I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So, and you know yeah. what's wild about it? You say you're still learning, but while you're learning, you're also teaching, because mm-hmm. there's somebody listening to you right now, who's like, you know what? I think I can do this. I want to be a podcaster, and the cycle continues, and it's like what I want people to pick up from me podcasting is that you should never limit the opportunities of others Mm -hmm. to think that you're shining brighter no matter what you do with the light bulb it's not going to shine brighter if you turn off the other lights it's still shining at that same level it's just you turned off every other light, so now that light bulb is alone. But it's still shining with that same wattage. There's nothing – a 30-watt bulb can't shine at 45. It can't get to 45 uh, uh, watts. It just It's impossible. So mm-hmm. if you turn off all the other lights and you tell the, the light bulb, okay, now you're shining at 45, you're lying to the light. So – if you get out there and you start limiting your access to other people, you start limiting the way I've had people or I know people because I've been in podcasts for a really long time who would go on other people's podcasts and literally do a horrible job on purpose Wow! to tank their podcast. I know people remember I've been here since the wild, wild west of podcasting. I know people who would go on other people's podcasts and leave a horrible review just to try and sink their numbers. You aren't going to shine brighter by limiting other people's light. It's, 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 it's impossible. And at some point, everybody's light dims. Everybody's Mm -hmm. light goes out. Like it, it, it's inevitable. You come up, you go down. So Just try and make sure that if somebody asked you, what can I do to get here? You may think I don't have anything to tell them, but you have your experiences and your experiences are a testimony. And those are things you can carry with you and talk about all the way through. So, yeah, that's the other thing I wanted to say. Yep. No, well, I mean, right I have a lot that. that I want to say, but that's yeah. that was something else that was on my chest. That's and that's crazy you say that because there was a guy that emailed me this morning. Uh, you know, he messaged me on Facebook and he was like, "Hey, I'm thinking about starting this podcast up, but I don't know where to start." And and, and I seen you doing it, and he was like, well, "What do I do?" And I just like you said, I I just told him my experience. I just told him what I did. I just told him the process I I went to start and. You know, ask around, do your research, you know, this is the equipment I use, this is what I do. You know, hey, if you can, you know, afford it or, you know, do what you can do, 
you know, start there, but it, you know, it's, there, there's resources out here. There's resources out here to do it. So, yeah, most definitely. You and speaking speaking of uh, uh, light shining bright, let's talk about let's talk about a little bit of uh, uh, pro wrestling and uh, Bray Wyatt. That was a big star that was shining bright that they just uh, shut down and just just closed that closed that light down. It. I don't, I don't understand it. it either. I'm still confused on it. I mean, I can still close my eyes and think about when I was sitting in the Golden One Center. That's what they call it now. Um, and and the fireflies are out. And mm-hmm. everybody was singing his song and everybody was holding their lights. And, and it was just such a surreal moment. And I'm getting chills just thinking about it. And yeah. everybody loved him. No matter what Bray did, everybody loved him. I mean, I thought, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I thought The Fiend was stupid when it first came out. I thought he looked <laughs> stupid. I thought he looked like an idiot. And and I thought that he was, I thought that Bray was a little bit too close to what Finn Balor was doing at that point in time. Oh, with the, the demon? demon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that it was a little bit too close. And I thought that you having two of them at the same time was going to be an issue. But then they swung him into being that almost like Mr. Rogers with that other with the uh, with the flip side. And he made it work. He always yes. makes things work. And I, I why would you take somebody who always makes things work and tell them this ain't working anymore? We're going to take your idea and give it to the next person. That's it's, it just blew my mind. So I'm hoping he goes to AEW. I am I- period. Yeah, same. I, I whatever he does, wherever he goes, like I know AEW has stacked talent, and like as, as right now they're saying Daniel Bryan and CM Punk could be going. There. But I'm like, how many people could AEW possibly get? They already have a lot of people. Like mm-hmm. they have a lot of people, and I'm like, if not there, if he can go to to an MLW or New Japan or somewhere like that and work good, good for him wherever he goes. Hopefully, he's being, you know, he's, he's able to be creative. And, you know, they let him be creative because I, I feel like everything he's done and created so far has been great. Like, yeah, he was Husky Harris at the beginning with NXT and everything. And when they did the whole, you know, invasion uh, uh, with Nexus and everything, he he was Husky. And then, like, they gave him, you know, the Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family. And he made that work like that cult leader, you know, he was that cult leader and he had the uh, uh, Braun and he had uh, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. I'm like, it was, he had a, that was a dope group too. And I'm like, I feel like they killed that too. And I'm like, you know, and then he gets this fiend character in this Firefly Funhouse. And I was like, this is Mr. Rogers on crack. This is <laughs> like, this is, this is like your brain on drugs. And I'm like, this, I can see this on TV. <laughs> like, this would be a great, when I first saw that, I thought of Adult Swim. I was like, this guy is hitting Adult Swim, like, right on the head with this Firefly Fun House. Like, it's just, it's creepy and it's odd and it's funny. Like, he's doing everything, you know, right. And I'm like, this, this, this character. Like, and then when he started letting it, you know, letting the, the Fiend character be shown and everything, it was like, oh, okay, this is dark. Oh, this is dark. Oh, how are the parents going to feel about this? How are the kids going to And it seemed like everybody embraced it. And everybody was, like, loving what he was doing. And when he debuted and, you know, when he attacked Finn Balor and all that, and mm-hmm. basically, you know, sent him to NXT. But I know, you know, Finn wanted to go to NXT or whatever. But that character was good. And then just to, just to wash that away, I feel like they didn't book him right either. Like, putting that heavyweight championship on him so quick was not good you know yeah so yeah it was just like uh i don't know i feel like they they rushed his character you know and, and like just just putting the title on him and like that like that hell in the cell match he had with uh seth rollins it was like they messed that finish up and it's like they just didn't they just didn't he wasn't booked correctly and then like said giving it to alexa bliss i think she was relying on him to come back exactly because from the way it sounded in her tweet she she was shot just like every all of us. I I now I was with my son at Oceans of Fun. I was taking to the, the uh, water park and I saw it on my phone. And I'm like, whoa! I was like, we get to watch. I said, like, huh? This is this is not real. No, Bray White. No, not Bray. And then my phone starts going off. And my friends like, uh, they just released Bray. I 
I, I'm guessing, yeah, they they did. This is crazy. So it's yeah, I'm still shocked because I'm like he's the he was the top merch seller. You know he he had a lot going on. It was good for the company, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. I was like, if he does go to AEW and, they, and he's able to do it, good for him. Good for him. And hopefully, you know, he could uh, he could uh, be the best there that he could be, and you know, keep that ball rolling. Because I, I I just don't know the current WWE situation right now is just odd. With all these firings and every everything, it's just it's it's odd, especially like, like Ric Flair and all these guys, uh, uh, a lot of the NXT stars, and mm-hmm. yeah, and like there's a lot. Now I I went to an NXT show uh, when they came out here, and like Keith Lee, they're disrespecting him. Like yeah. like it makes no sense what they're doing. I'm like that guy, that guy's a talent. Like you don't bury him, you don't have him losing on you know Raw. And you take his music away. You take the the thing he, he had in NXT that was making him, you know, that was he was known for. And I don't know if Vince disrespects NXT or what, but it seems like whatever the, that's going good on NXT, when he brings it to that main roster, he just starts chipping away at it, chipping away. Now I don't know if have you been watching recently what's been going on on the. Uh, no, but my son watches religiously. Um, right. I actually, I just, I, I honestly feel badly for everybody who's been released because there's no way the AEW can take them all on. Exactly. There's not. Um, and there's so many great people that got let go. I was just looking at a list of them. Um they can't all go there. So some of them are going to have to go overseas and, and, and some are going to go back to Indy and. Yep. But no, I'm sorry. What were you saying? No, I was going to, what I was saying was, I was, oh, oh, I was going to say it. There's one of the guys in NXT right now that just came up to the main roster, uh, Karrion Cross. Uh, mm-hmm. He was a uh, killer cross in, in the Indies and he was a big, he's a, he's a big star. He's a star. And uh, his girlfriend that manages him, uh, Scarlett Bardot, uh, Bardot or Bardo, however she pronounces her last name, whatever, uh, she did not come up to the main roster with him yet. I don't know if they're building for him to, you know, keep losing. And eventually she comes and helps him because she's kind of like, you know, how Undertaker had Paul Bear in the urn. Mm-hmm. I say that she's kind of like his urn, like his Paul Bear, like, you know, she, she gives his character life. And like they, you know, they brought him on Raw, and he's just been losing. Like he lost one, then he wins one, then he loses one. And it's like, eh, it's like there's, it's like Vince is trying to slowly bury him. And then, from what I hear, is the morale in NXT is, hey, this is what is kind of like, this is what Vince thinks about you. And I wouldn't want to go to the main roster if I, you know, I'm seeing that. Exactly. It, it makes sense why Adam Cole would not want to go to the main roster or Johnny Gargano or Tommaso Chomp, any of those guys that are in the NXT roster. I would I would rather stay in NXT. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go up. But that's the fear. That's the fear. That's why I would go and, you know, my, let my contract expire and go to AEW. I mean, because once you make it up to that top roster, there's nowhere else for you to go. Yep. And as soon as you get to that top roster, you find out that the folks who are at the top ain't moving out of the way for you. Yep. So then all of a sudden you become a jobber, not even a jobber, just extra. Like they don't have a place for you. Yeah. At least a jobber can come out there and, and work every single day, even if they're losing. Like you'll see some of the folks on, on WWE come from AEW and just fall into the mix and you don't see them again for like six, seven months. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. It's, it's wild. It's, it's crazy. Uh, I'll sit down the uh, the other crazy thing that this is non WWE. This will be a little bit of Marvel. What's going on with this, uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson and Disney situation. Now (laughs) that's wild too. Now is she about to ruin her relationship with uh, Marvel and uh, Disney? Because this is, you know, now now I don't know. Now what I'm, what I know is this is that 
I'm guessing when, when Black Widow came out, it was supposed to be straight to theaters. It was not supposed to be on Disney Plus at all, or maybe until like later down the line or something like that. But mm-hmm. from what I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's what she wanted it just to be in a the theater. So you get that box office, you know, everybody going to the box office and not getting it at home. But I'm guessing that was the, the problem. And I guess Disney, from what I'm seeing, is Disney lied to her and put it on Disney Plus anyway. So, and I'm guessing that's because she's uh, suing them. So that's the, that's the, the situation right now. Now, my thing is with this being, would supposed to be like her backstory and everything. She's obviously not going to come back. So I'm guessing there was no more plans for her anyway after this movie. Yeah. From what I'm thinking. So yeah. this was supposed to be her last payday. I think and, so. I mean, on the one hand, I see where she's coming from. This is like, like, like we said, her last payday. This was supposed to be it for her. Um, on the other hand, I was wondering, did she make this deal with Marvel before they got absorbed by Disney? Yeah, that's 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 another part of it. That's the and other part of it. That's what they're not talking about because if they made the deal prior to being absorbed by Disney, then that's not Disney's deal. And mm-hmm. Disney is doing what's best for their company by doing the um by doing the Disney Plus premium thing. I mean, if I, I'm I'm honestly thinking that Kevin Feige wants to do right by Scarlett Johansson. She was a part of building the structure that is now Marvel and is now Disney. But if Disney was involved in this, I I, I just feel like they wouldn't have tried to get over on her or else she would have had more uh, information about what they did or what they offered her or what they promised her but her information is vague and it's all based on the before time so i'm waiting i've heard that her lawsuit is flimsy um Mm -hmm. now that's just from one website um so it, it it at this point in time it could be whatever but i know that what is going to be a resulting uh what's going to result from this is that a lot of people are saying that they're going to also be suing because of um, HBO max and, and Disney doing these, doing, doing the uh, home viewings of the movies. But Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't see the big deal. I don't, I, I feel like, to me, it feels like they're like, I, I wanted people to go out and get sick in order to, for me to get more money. Yeah, yeah. Or it also feels like your movie didn't sell. All right, let's 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 just keep it 100. Uh Black Widow did what it was supposed to do as far as being uh introduction to her her sister and to mm-hmm. her uh to the Red Guardian. Yeah. But the movie after the first weekend didn't do great at all. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so what was the movie that knocked it out? There was a movie that knocked it out that like what the next week or something like what was it? I'm trying to was it a kid's movie? It was like a kid's movie or something, right? Like knocked it, it I can't knocked remember. Knocked it out the box. I don't even yeah, remember it what it out. Did. Yeah, it knocked it out. I was like, whoa, like, that's not good at all. No. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's that's exactly now with the with the time. Okay, so I'm reading this right um, now from cinemablend.com. Um, and this came out when uh, this was this came out today, August 4th. Um, Black Widow um, is going to open up a proverbial can of worms. It could lead to more actors suing Disney because unlike Warner Brothers, evidently the Mouse House didn't shell out additional money to its biggest talent after implementing the day, the date and day release plan. Uh, mm-hmm. Although admittedly, WB didn't do this until after Backlash. Uh, to the initial uh, announcement came pouring in. They're saying that uh, the streamers are betting that in the next three to five years, there'll only be three or four of them left pumping content to the home, and they'll be so powerful that they'll be able to push the price down to producing, and I personally don't think they'll be able to do it. So they're predicting that there'll be a ton of lawsuits to hopefully lead to sharing and streaming. 
Yeah. I don't know. We're going to see. Uh, I, I did find it interesting. The one thing that I did find interesting about the whole thing is how they chose to make Black Widow the only Marvel movie that they showed at home and in the movie theater. Yeah. Yep. That spoke to me um, from a standpoint of why are you doing this to the movie that stars the the women? But then I saw it and I was like, oh. Yeah, it was, like I said, it, I, I enjoyed it, but I still feel, I feel this, is that it did not this should have came out at a different time. Like, and I'm mm-hmm. saying like in the Marvel universe, I feel like this should have came out maybe like after Civil War. Yep. Like, I feel like this should have happened after Civil War because I'm like, the way this goes down, is like, if you want to give her her backstory, give it, because that would be right before, you know, Infinity War. And so you can see how she got, you know, well, well I'm sure people haven't seen it by now. The vest, you know, the j- jacket, you know, the jacket, the vest that the sister had, and mm-hmm. all that that she wears in Infinity War. So it's like, you know, an in game and all that. So it's like now, you know, that that that's the time that movie should have came out. But I don't know. I feel like they they messed up, and I think the simple fact that it took them that long to her, give her her own movie really messed that you know messed it up. Because like when I watched that movie, I was like. This feels like this should have been out. <laughs> yeah. should have, this should have been made a long time ago. Yep. Like, yep. and that was Age of Ultron, was it? No, no, that was, that was, um, yeah, no, that was Age of Ultron, where they gave Thor a vision, and they gave her a vision, and, and Thor took off, and, and yep. all that kind of stuff. That would have been, you know, that would have been, acceptable if after civil war they went and showed exactly what she did when she was on the run like that would have tied mm-hmm. into it perfectly yeah. but the problem is then they had that part where they showed that she died and all that kind of stuff yeah. so mm-hmm. um which didn't have to happen honestly yeah like uh especially with what they're showing us in loki with all the different multiverses and everything man loki is crazy that yeah. show is wild like it, I, I was kind of like at first I was like, "How? What is this gonna be? What is this gonna be?" Because I was curious. I was like, "How's this gonna go down?" And when I watched that first episode, I'm like, "Oh, oh, we're going back to like the uh, was the end game when they did the whole the the tra- the time travel and they were you know going through the you know the first Avengers movie and all." I'm like, "Oh, I see what happened because you know remember that part when he escapes, mm-hmm. you know." in new york and i was like oh this is what we're doing okay and then you know and then he gets you know caught and everything and going through the uh the tva and then i was like this is crazy and uh um uh miss minutes like her character i love her character i thought that her character was great and um and what's the uh uh sylvie i love her character too i i thought it was wild i was like, like i had a feeling she was gonna mess up the time spoilers She's gonna mess up the timeline, <laughs> you know. Uh, but the uh, Kang the Conqueror, you know, everything she did, you know, taking him out, you know, or mm-hmm. his variant, you know, he's like, there's other versions of me. You're not gonna like them. So we we know now that, that things are about to get crazy, especially like with Wandavision as well. Wandavision was good, good too. I like how they uh, they set that up. But yeah, the, the MCU is about to get crazy again. Like it's about to get crazy. And I'm ready to see uh uh this what if show and what you know what that's gonna bring to the table. I don't know. I don't think that's gonna bring anything into the Marvel cinematic universe. I don't know, maybe I don't know. I don't think so, but I think that Hawk I know Hawkeye will, that Hawkeye uh, series will. But uh yeah, I'm very interested to see what's going down with that. Yeah. And yeah. It's gonna be it's exciting. Like it's reinvigorated me for what's going on um, in movies, mm-hmm. period, as well as what they're doing on Disney Plus. So, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to each and every aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and what do you think about the uh, the guy that they cast for uh, Kane the Conqueror? I thought he was really good. Oh man, his, I, I think Jonathan Major was... is so dope. 
He's I thought he was dope after um, I thought he was dope after the Five Bloods right, right. and mm-hmm. Lovecraft Country. I actually had to go back and watch him again in uh, The Last Black Man in San Francisco just because the first time I saw it, I was like, that was weird. And then I saw him in all these other movies and I was like, oh, that dude was on this movie. Let me go back and watch it again. Yeah, so, I had to go back and watch his work because I was like, this guy's good. Hold on, who is this guy? Like, he's really good. Yeah, he's just had his whole interaction with them and, you know, how he's like, you know, his his backstory in there, you know, the, the, he tells them the episode. I was like, this is dope. You know, this is dope. So I'm like, this is kind of, and, and it, and it kind of lets you know, like, this is why we're going to see, like, with the upcoming Spider-Man movie, why we'll see the uh, the other versions of Spider-Man in the movie and all that. And uh, and what's going to go on with that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? That movie's going to be crazy. That movie's going to be real crazy. See, I'm excited for what Marvel uh, is doing. Uh, also, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of hyped. Now, my, my DC Comics hype, it, it goes up and down because, you know, they, they can mess up. They can mess up, but uh, I, I'm kind of interested to see this new Suicide Squad. Yeah, me too. Uh, I want to see. I want to see how that's going to go. I want to. I'm interested to see how that's going to happen with this last one because I'm like, this is going to be weird because like no Will Smith, you know, is a uh, 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 the dead shadow. You know, like this is going to be interesting to see how they do this because I'm like, how do you explain that away that he's not, you know. This, this this new guy is different, you know. This is Idris Elba. This is not Will Smith. So I'm like, how are they gonna how are they gonna explain this one off? Mm-hmm. So are they just gonna say, oh, this is an older version or some years past? I don't know. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. Now, are they saying that? I mean, is Idris's character supposed to be who Will Smith was? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's he he like. just. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't know that part. I, was, I I thought that they were just gonna have a group of different people because they had everybody else different, with the exception of Harley. So yeah, I just thought they were gonna have a whole new group of folks. But yeah, they say the wrong thing. People are gonna be on their helmet about that one. What you mean? You've been out in the sun too long. What? <laughs> exactly. 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 Because I'm like. That's gonna make sense. Like, how are they gonna how are they gonna explain that one? Like, I, I'm still confused. Like, how are they gonna do that? Yeah. And I think old girl from the first movies in it. Uh, what's her name? I can't think of the girl's name right now off my head. But uh, the plays. Uh, she's like the head of the group or whatever. The the uh, the black lady. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like yeah, Viola. Like, you Viola. Yeah. You're like yeah. You do something wrong. I'll blow your head. You know. I hit this button. You're done. You know. You I take all y'all hair or whatever. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got to do what I say. So, yeah, I was like, oh, because she's in it too. So I'm like, yeah, how are they going to do that? You know, and I don't know. I feel like I, I hopefully that I'm guessing they're rebranding the whole thing since that Snyder cut, because I know that Snyder cut of Justice League kind of, I, mean, I think the fans like that version better. So I'm guessing they want to, I'm guessing hopefully this leads to some changes mm-hmm. within that, within the, um, the uh, the DC universe, <laughs> you know, but I, I, now now I'll say this: Birds of Prey was okay. It was okay. It wasn't it wasn't the best, but it was all right. I'll say that. But mm-hmm. I'm interested to see where they're gonna go with with Harley's character in this uh, Suicide Squad movie. Yeah, me too. Especially since they're saying that it's halfway of a sequel and half of a reboot. It's like, yeah, you can't really. I'm still trying to figure out how they're going to make that work. So, yeah, it's going to yeah. be interesting. Yep. Yeah. And I seen, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, John Cena was on the red carpet. Was it, was it yesterday or the day mm-hmm. before? Yeah. He was on the red carpet. And I see he ran in uh, Rusev, uh, Miro. He runs in the Miro. And uh, he's like, hey, how are you doing and everything? And he's like, you know, I'm like, well, I wanted to tell him, like, hey, you might want to come to AEW. <laughs> I was like, oh, that would have been interesting to, to see him, you know, that interaction. Because I guess, they, you know, they are friends in real life, you know, behind the scenes and all that. But I was like, it was pretty cool to see them interact, you know, an AEW guy and a WWE guy, you know, interacting on a, a DC uh, um, premiere. 
you know, so it was pretty cool to see that. But uh, yeah, I, I want to see John Cena's character. I don't know too much about his character in this movie. And that's mm-hmm. bad to say because I, I like I am a comic book guy, <laughs> but I'm like, I don't like DC, like I know certain things, but I like I don't go that deep into DC, you know, like, but I'm I'm interested to learn uh, about these characters though, these new characters that they're gonna uh, put in. Yeah, uh, if, if it works, I mean, I was just talking with somebody at the movie theater. Today's what, Wednesday? Mm-hmm. I was just talking to somebody at the movie theater on Monday about how few good DC movies there's been. And this will make the third good one, in my opinion. Um, well, maybe four. The fourth good one, because you got Wonder Woman, not 1984, just Wonder that Woman. That was terrible. Yeah, the second one was bad. <laughs> yeah. So you got Wonder Woman, you got Shazam. You got birds of prey, and then if this is good, you'll have this, and that's not mm-hmm. a that's not a track record you want to have, yeah. but it's a good place to start. So, yep, yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's I'm interested to see what's gonna happen with them and that's a movie. Though I hope it does good. Like I said, I hope it does good. I don't want to feel. I don't want DC to feel like I want them to. I want them to start, you know, bringing some fire because I'm like they have the better comics you know they have like like i'll say marvel's good but dc has the you know you got batman you got joker you have the you have some historic you know historic comic book characters that are you know known it's like yeah get this get this ball rolling like and i I know they're supposed to be doing this new batman movie and i'm like i hope that new batman movie is good if it happens Mm -hmm. okay yeah because i'm like i want to see it i want to see it if they do a uh, uh old man Bruce Wayne, you know, because they're saying like Michael Keaton's coming back. And I'm like, oh yeah, if we do if we do like an old man Bruce Wayne, nice, you know, like or a Batman Beyond style. I don't know. But yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it. But uh but yeah, what was I gonna say? Now I was gonna ask you, have you uh, uh did you see the verses but the uh, uh dipset and the locks? Did you see that? You know, the cool thing about it is if you just sit on Twitter and watch, you will <laughs> learn everything you need to see without actually seeing it. Yeah. So no, I was able to avoid the dipset getting massacred by Jada Kids and the locks. Like I heard Jada Kids went out there and did what Jada Kids does, which is tear the roof off and meanwhile Dipset came out there like oh we were just told to meet together at this time we didn't know we was doing a concert essentially and looked awful with their lip syncing off sync and all that kind of stuff like I swear they came out drunk I that's what I was, what like, I was gonna I, say I was like well, they drunk because they came out like because like uh Michael Buffer like he did he did an intro like oh you're the locks you know uh, you know, Styles P and JD Kiss and she like they all come out and they're like and he doesn't he does interdiction introduction for Dipset and like they're just they're not there they like they they take forever to come out everybody's like what like what's going on like where they at like where they at and then JD Kiss like come on man this is this is this is Brad this is hip hop like, get out of here get out of here and I get to a couple more minutes then they start filing out. And it was like they came late, like and they looked drunk. I'm like, yeah, I look off. Like, mm-hmm. they like they did, but they prepared, like, and then like did, you know, the arguing and all of course, the, you know, the whole New York banner and all banter and all that between them. It was hilarious. And then it's like you got all these randos trying to get on the stage. It was very ghetto. We'll say it was very ghetto. Like they were, you know, just just random people trying to get on the stage. And then at one point, there was all kind of people on the stage, like right, like they had to stop the whole battle. Like, hey, everybody off the stage, like everybody off the stage. Like it was just, it was, it was ratchet, it was ghetto, it was black excellence at the same time. Because it was, it was a massacre. Jada was not having, he was like at their neck. And then it was just, they kid like Dipset just came out disrespectful. Like they brought the beach chair out and, and Cameron's was sitting on the beach chair. Oh, this would be a walk in the park. Like this would be easy. I'm like, eh, no. Nah. And then when they started playing their songs and you hear the, you know, the lyrics in the background, 
And Jade is like, uh, uh, what? Did y'all not practice? Did y'all not rehearse? Like, uh, no, nah, we, we, we going bar for bar. We going, you know, no lyrics in the background, you know, like practice, you know your lyrics. Exactly. It, it just seemed like they were just fumbling. I was disappointed. I was like, I'm a big, I was a dipshit man. I'm, I'm a locks fan too, but I'm like, I was hoping they would come. I'm like, they did, they did not bring any heat. I'm like, this is like, it was sad. It was sad to watch it, but it was like, it was awesome to see Jada kids do his thing. Like Jada and Styles P and she was like, they was doing their thing. Like they came prepared for war. Like I was like, these guys were serious. Like these guys are seriously ready. Like it was, it was like you said, it was a massacre. It was a massacre in Madison Square Garden. And it was, it was a beautiful thing. I'm like, man, he, he was going for hits and hits and hits and, you know, they were, you know, Dipset's doing their thing, but it's like, they kept fumbling, they were, they were, they were forgetting lines. Uh, matter of fact, like, uh, uh, Jim Jones tripped and fell into the crowd. <laughs> he falls into, the, I'm like, dude, are you drunk? Like, what's really going on here? Like, did y'all get, like, met, like did y'all not know this was, like, serious? Because he's like, the whole time, Jada's like, this is rigged. He's, this is a rigged fight. He's like, these guys ain't ready. Like, He's like, this is a massacre. He's like, y'all should have brought like a, a Wu Tang or somebody. <laughs> like, yeah. Basically, yeah, or an outcast. Some, yeah, yeah. He was like, this is like, this is the temptations. Like we about to kill him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was it was crazy. It was a crazy thing to see. I was hyped. I was like, this is it was a good battle. It was a good battle. <laughs> you know, to you know, I said later on, Jim Jones. I could tell he kind of got serious. Because he started doing all, you know, the uh, Hustlers poem. He started doing the stuff off that, you know, summer in Miami. And he's like, oh, y'all ain't got no feet, you know, no drinks for the females. And he was like, you crazy? You know, Jay was like, you crazy? Like, we got, we got hits for the ladies. We got and he started doing all the stuff for the ladies. And they going crazy. It was like, it was lit. It was lit. I'll give it that, you know. But it was, uh, yeah, it was very ratchet and very ghetto. <laughs> and and I, was, I was waiting for the fight to break out. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it gave me it gave me Source Awards vibe, very Source Awards vibes. Yes, yes. And that's what um, a lot of people were saying that they were looking out for. Like, okay, when these dudes are getting beat this badly, the next step is you got to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't think that there'd be such animosity, but I would have taken it. I, I would have been looking yeah. for it if it had actually popped off. Yeah, yeah, I was out. Oh, if not during the show, after the show, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. It's gonna, something's gonna go down. But no, mm-hmm. it didn't. It didn't. I was actually surprised. I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, everybody kept it together. You know, and that's good because <laughs> I think at one point Jada was like, "Don't scare the white folk." <laughs> Don't scare. <laughs> they was like, they was getting ready to shut it down. At one point, they was like, "We shouldn't." They was like, "No, nah, don't shut us. Don't shut it down." Yeah, and uh, uh, they were like, yeah, 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 y'all gotta chill out because I think they were taking all that banner seriously, seriously, like they was getting ready to start fighting. And I was like, yeah, they, yeah, because I was like, they had to cool that down. And then all the random people, like there was some random dude, like buff, like no shirt on, just saying, like, where did he come from on the stage? They're like, get out of here. Like, if you're not performing, get out. Yeah, but it was a, it was an interesting thing to see last night. But no, um, but no, it was it was it was a good battle. It was a good massacre. A good massacre. I'll say that. I'll say that, man. <laughs> a good massacre. It was um, a good massacre. So I I looked it up. I've been looking for this this whole time because I was like, there's no way they're gonna pull that off. Idris Elba's character is named Bloodsport. Blood, oh, blood. Oh, so it's not. So it's not. The Oxford was dead. I thought it was gonna be dead shot still. Oh, no, nope, so, it's Bloodsport. So, so he. Bloodsport. Yeah, he was in prison for putting Superman in the ICU with a kryptonite bullet. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's, that's a whole nother character. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm going to have to look him up. Because I swear I thought it was just going to be because I was like, I thought it was going to be dead. He was going to be like the new version of Deadshot. Like, okay, all right. That's good. Well, that's good. That's good to know. A new character. Okay. I'm learning something. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So what is he gonna say? I wonder what uh what comic season. I'm gonna have to look him up now. I'm gonna have to look that character up. Um, let me see if they talk about any comics that he's in. Nah, because he looks like he looks like Will Smith's character. He looks like just a normal dude with the guns, like Will Smith's character had in another Suicide Squad movie. 
It looks it looks the same. As I yeah, it doesn't say any comics that he's actually in, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this somebody they're making up? (laughs) Might be. Might be that. I mean, I trust James Gunn to take these people and make them make a good story out of it. If he doesn't, this will be the first time that's happened, and that's coming from somebody who tolerated the second half of um guardians of the galaxy part two yeah yeah guardians that was our the first one always is the best one to me first guardians was the best movie that Mm -hmm. was the best one that was that was the best movie yeah the second one was okay yeah that second half of the second one was like okay but yeah 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 that's hmm. yeah definitely gonna have to check that out now But yeah, that's gonna make it. That'll be interesting to see. Cause they, yeah, that'll be interesting yeah, to see. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think, man. Yeah, that's that's dope. But yeah, yeah. Like I said, man. Shoot, I know I want to hold you, and uh, you just tell people where to find you and uh, everything you got going on. I know you got the oh oh. Well, that's what I was gonna talk to you about. The podcast that you do i know you do one for uh oz Mm -hmm. tell the people about that one okay so i do a podcast called return to oswald and it's myself my homeboy scar and then my friend brandon uh watching every episode of oz and every tuesday we get together and we review the episode we discuss the episode so it's like a recap a recap we recap every episode throughout all six seasons and right now we're on season four uh we just finished episode 12 uh recently and Mm -hmm. it is simultaneously a wonderful time because i get to be amongst two of my uh, closest friends but it's also often painful because the show uh just has so many flaws that you don't really see until you watch it again with a discerning eye and when i watch this show i take like 10 pages of notes Um, so then we could discuss it from end to end um but it's an excellent, excellent time. Um, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of jokes. We get a lot of jokes off. There are some great conversations that happen about from everything running the gamut from religion to prisoners' rights. Um, and we speak honestly and, and we argue and then we come right back together and keep moving forward. So I love every moment of it. And y'all can check that out. Um, on spotify well honestly easiest thing to do is go to linktree l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e uh slash ss cast uh if you go there i literally have my link tree set up so then there's branches that lead to all of my shows so uh return to oswald is in there single simulcast is in there yep. ratchet book club is in there and if you click ratchet on book those club is crazy Ratchet Book Club is crazy. <laughs> I'd be listening to that at work and I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> My wife listens to it and she's like, these motherfuckers are some motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm like, wait, you don't cuss. When did this happen? Um, <gasps> but it's, it's my one rule, unless it's a book that I've read before. Uh, my one rule is that I don't read ahead. Like every um chapter i have to be recording when i read the chapter so then i can get the genuine response to whatever it is is happening in the book um and so it's a lot of fun uh for the uninitiated i uh read hood classics and good classics which means essentially i read um urban fiction that ranges from Old Thought Next Door and the cartel uh, all the way over to uh, what I call good classes, which are books that I love. Um, Maniac McGee and um, The Phantom Tollbooth. And right now I'm reading The Death and Life of Bobby Z. And if something doesn't make sense, I make fun of it. If something goes down, I make fun of it. If uh, there's a typo, I make fun of it. 
if some fuckery happens, I make fun of it. It is literally like these books are just the perfect way for me to get my comedy off. And I'm having a blast with each and every moment of uh, that show. Um, it's it's incredible. It is, period. Yeah, it's, re it's really good. I suggest, you know, everybody check that out. Yeah, definitely check out a single song cast and Ratchet Book Club and everything. Return to Oswald, all of this stuff. I listen to it all, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely was like, yeah, definitely got to plug all that, man, because, yeah, it's, it's dope content, man, definitely, definitely. I appreciate that. It, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's what happens when you stop worrying about what other people think about you and what you want to do. Um, and it's really finding that freedom to stand alone and, and just chase your own interests until you find something that works for you. And I'm at that point now. Um, between those and then hindsight, I am doing yeah, the full like, gamut of shows that that I love, and I could still go back and uh, still do single simulcast with Shanta. It's still available. Mm -hmm. Like like all of these things are still there. It's just that you got to keep making your own path. You know, um, a lot of podcasts that started in like the early 2010s and the you know in the in the tens i guess i don't know how to really say it but they were all pop culture like they were all following in the same footsteps it was either music and pop culture or um black geekery and pop culture or pop culture and pop culture and we're still in that path like there's still a lot yeah. of black folks who if you ask them what their favorite shows are they'll tell you straight out it's the read which is pop culture and the black guy who tips which is pop culture and yeah um there's all these other avenues out there for us like my my uh friend uh jv he or rather let me think of what their pronouns are i think it's they them i think because they're non-binary i'm so sorry right. but jv they um actually put out and you gotta you gotta see this man you gotta listen to this podcast they put out a yeah, birds of prey fan fiction oh really okay. yes yeah I gotta um uh and and it is fantastic it is a full-on audio drama with the sound effects and everything and it is dope as Fuck. and they wrote that they put that together i have another friend who um has a show gosh true crime they just talk about like like all of these avenues that are you would primarily think okay this is white folks shit this is what the white folks are doing no we can enter these spaces but we gotta be less aware or less worried about what other people are going to think about us trying to enter these spaces mm -hmm. and just be focused more on making room for ourselves once we enter that space so yeah yeah, yeah we have cause I, and then that's the other thing too we get typecasted into certain things too like i'll be working i'll tell somebody oh but yeah i do a podcast or some of the i have like my face mask on and i have my my logo mm -hmm. my logo on it and they're like Oh, what's that? Oh, that's my podcast, uh, EBS TV podcast, or whatever. Oh, what do you talk about? You talking about NBA, NFL? No, mm -hmm. no. I talk, I talk nerd culture, pro wrestling, pro wrestling. What are you talking about pro wrestling for? That's whack. Did it? I talk, you know, I talk movies, music. You know, I'll do interviews with artists or you know entertainers, whoever you know. And mm -hmm. oh, 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 okay. Like, yeah, check it out. Like, no, not everybody's in that field. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't mind talking to those people. I don't mind, you know, having somebody from that, you know, on my show. Because a lot of them, they're in our culture. They're in the nerd culture, you know, video games and podcasts and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I always, you know, just, you know, I'm, I'm down to talk to anybody. So, exactly. and, 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 and try to change that because it's just like the, it's, it's just like video game culture, uh, you know, you go to gaming conventions or you go somewhere and they're like, oh, are you, are you a Madden guy? No, no, I'm a Fallout guy. I'm a, I play Fallout. <laughs> I'll play uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 or I'll play Fighters or something. I mean, I'm not a, no, no. Oh, you're the NFL. You're, you're the NFL or NBA person. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yeah. But I, I, I don't have no problem with it. But no, we'll, 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 we, we're we're in everything. We're in all kind of things. You know, we're not we're not going to be typecasting into this one thing that you want us to be in. You know, 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. No, oh, no, I can't. I can't end it without asking you. I always ask, like, people I have on, what was your first video game console? Oh. Oh. I think it was the Intellivision. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we got, my dad bought the Intellivision, and he only had two games for it. It was blackjack and, and, and basketball. Well, three games, blackjack, basketball, and baseball. And so I was three, maybe four, mm. uh, when we got it. And so I learned how to count. I tell people this all the time, and they don't believe me. I learned how to count playing blackjack on Intellivision. <laughs> um right. because my dad would sit there with me and be like this is this many and then i'd watch sesame street but in connection yeah. uh and then after that i got like right behind that my dad bought the coleco vision okay. uh so we had those two and then my mom bought us my brother and i after my my mom and dad split up my mom bought us a nintendo so that was our yep. first system was, and then my dad my had system. the mm-hmm. sega master system so we've i've gone through life fortunate enough to be able to say that I've either owned or knew somebody who owned every single system that came out. And I was able to play from the beginning all the way through because my uncle had an Atari 7,800. And so on that, I was playing that busted ass Pac-Man. And so my, my homeboy had the Apple, you know, the old school Apple computer that had number yeah. munchers on it and Oregon <laughs> Trail and all that Oregon kind of Trail, stuff. So yeah. I'm out there playing that. So I loved the ColecoVision. If you ask me now how to play it with all those buttons on the, uh, with all the number pad buttons and stuff uh, on the controller, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Yeah. But when it was coming up, you couldn't tell me nothing when it came to, uh, Mousetrap and and Ladybug, two obscure Uh, games that I thought were just the best things in the world. And they still make you smile. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, nah. Uh, And television came into our house and completely changed the game. I know a lot of people uh, I've told that when I got to college, my first thing that I did when I stepped into college was I opened up all the windows and all the doors and turned on the air conditioner and air conditioning the neighborhood. The second thing I did was went out and bought myself a, that was 1998. So I went out and bought myself a Dreamcast, uh, yes, I believe. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. I had the Dreamcast, yep. And so I had the Dreamcast and I had a PlayStation in my dorm. And so I got nothing done because the people across the hall had the N64 in their dorm. Yep. And so we were playing a whole lot of Perfect Dark and WCW yes. uh, uh, versus well, NWO. NWO. Which one? Revenge. Revenge? Yes, yeah. that's the one. So, yes. yeah. I still have mine. I still have mine and I have that game. Somebody stole my GoldenEye 007. And I'm still punching the air about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to get in like you try to you know go to vintage stock or go somewhere to try to buy it. It's like oh we want like you know eighty to hundred something. Like, Wait a minute now, but I, but I get it. I get it. It's a classic. I get it. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, man. Yeah, perfect dark. All that. Yeah, classics, man. Classic. Anything exactly. you're playing right now that like you're enjoying or or video games are out the window now. <laughs> No, um, right now, actually, I took the next step and bought myself an arcade cabinet. Okay. okay. Um, so that's like downstairs. The, uh, I'm, uh, like the arcade one up or which one did you? Uh, no, um, it's made by a group called Tabletop. Hold on. I think uh, I've heard of it. I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, tabletop something. I bought it off a guy. But um, it's a it's a tabletop arcade that has like a ton of games on it and um, just enjoying it. Um, loving getting to see the old games that we used to have on MAME and, and, and loving get getting a chance to uh, play some of the games that 
and beat some of the games that we weren't able to actually ever get our hands on because they were regional. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm playing tons and tons of games. Um, like I actually just bought a game on steam, um, called the ascent and I'm going to try oh, yeah, that out I've been tonight. About that. I've been hearing about that. I just downloaded that on my Xbox. So I'm going like, to should see how about that's about. So the ascent, and then also I'm trying to. I'm hoping that tonight I can get into the beta for Splitgate, and uh, try that out as well. But those are okay. just, you know, I'm looking forward to. I've looked forward for a long time to being able to play games without being judged for playing games in my house, and and I'm there now. I'm the I'm the adult, so I am enjoying every chance I get to play a video game, whether it's with my kids or by myself or by my wife or with my wife or by my wife's side. She likes watching them. Like, and that's good. She, that's good to have a supportive wife that supports the gaming. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. She yep. uh, treats it almost like she's watching TV. So that's always nice. fun to have as well. So that's yeah. good. That's good. Good balance. Mm-hmm. Good balance. Mm-hmm. That's what's up, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you, man. I thank you for having me. Having oh, me. It was man. an absolute pleasure. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, I have to do it again mm-hmm. you know, sometime soon or whatever. I'll have to come on uh, your show or some, one of your shows. And uh, Oh, yeah, I'll definitely. Come. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll definitely return the favor. I'm trying to do it, get into that anymore. anyway, just hopping on, you know, doing guest spots on other people's shows as well. I've already done one. I did uh, uh, my friend uh, Phoenix, his podcast. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, Phoenix Project, I did that. That was my first guest appearance. That was crazy because it was like a lot of people on that show. So I'm like, I don't want to be interrupting anybody or anything. So I'm like, okay, everybody's done. Can I can I speak? You know, they, they called me out. I'm like, okay. So it was it was it was different. I'm like, oh, this is my first time on, and it was like the Xbox showcase. Mm-hmm. Like, this is like right like E3 time. I'm like, okay, yeah. So this is this is serious. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, man, I definitely appreciate you for uh, coming through, and we definitely have you back again soon. I'll definitely have you back on. And, awesome. Uh, like I said, yeah, this is a Kojak production, man. A Kojak <laughs> production, man. Straight up, man. straight up, man. Straight up. All right.